Hello and welcome to another video. Some time ago, we covered uh, East German Soyanka. Soyanka from the GDR slash DDR. Um, and one of the primary components of this was a Hungarian um, stewed uh, sort of red bell pepper slash paprika dish called lecho. Now, uh, I'm not entirely sure how lecho is made in Hungary. So um, what covers here is the best approximation to what I can get at the store here um, in a way that would work very well for um, dishes like soyanka. So um, you can take this lecho, you can eat it um, as a stewed vegetable by itself. Uh, you can put it on bread. You could also use it perhaps as a base for a goulash, um, as well as, of course, for soyanka. So, um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's look at the ingredients and uh, move from there. The ingredients for this dish are pretty simple. We have a kilogram of red bell peppers. This is six relatively large peppers. Some salt and pepper. Onions. I have two smallish onions. These are about 100 grams each. Um, a half a kilogram, that's like 16, 18 ounces of tomato puree. Uh, most recipes I've seen use um, fresh tomatoes, but fresh tomatoes will give you a livelier, lighter flavor, while this is closer to what you'd get out of the um, sort of the standard um, uh, preparations you'd use for German food. And then, of course, I have sweet paprika, um, and we'll use a lot of this. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, uh, I will also use a small amount of oil. Uh, cooking oil um, doesn't really matter what kind. Um, today I'll probably use schmaltz just because I have it, but you could use any frying oil. So now I have about three tablespoons or so of oil. Um, as I say, I use schmaltz this time, but you could use anything. Bacon grease is sometimes used. In fact, some recipes even just use bacon and keep the grease in. Um, from this point, I'm going to start by adding my peppers and I'm gonna have to do this in two groups because it's a fair bit and the onions Try that after this And these will cook down just a little bit, but they will cook down much more. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stir these up for a bit. Uh, let them cook, let them wilt. Um, the total volume will go down a little bit um, so that when I add the, um, the rest of the stuff, it, it's fine. Um, you can add your paprika now, but I'm going to do this, as I say, maybe in about five or ten minutes. So now this has been cooking for a little while, and stuff's starting to just barely soften a little bit. Um, and so I'm going to add a bunch of this. This is going to be at least three tablespoons. You can add more. That's not the end of the world. And some of this is sticking, so I'm going to add a nice good fourth. And then I'm going to stir this in slowly and just kind of let it coat everything. And uh, this will slowly cook down a bit. Um, and then I will add the tomatoes and uh, maybe some salt and pepper and just let it cook more. So now it's been about 15 minutes, and you can see this is softening and packing down a little bit. So I'm going to add the tomatoes next, and a bit of salt and pepper, and uh, then we'll just let this stew slowly for maybe another hour or so. So now adding the tomatoes. Adding the tomatoes here. And now I'm going to stir this in 
Yeah, it's better, batters a little bit right now, but I'm just basically going to stir it in. You see that this is still almost all just veggies with a little bit of tomato in the middle. And all that spattering was me stirring it around. Um, and we're just gonna let this cook. I'll put a lid on it and uh, just kind of let this cook down for like another hour or so. So now it's been approximately an hour and you can see this is basically this really thick tomato uh, pepper stew. Uh, now I'll go ahead and do a small taste test. Um, I guess it's worth noting, I will add salt at this point um, and salt it like a stew, which means a fair bit of salt. And you can add some black pepper if you like. But uh, the next step will be the taste test. And uh, then we'll be done. Hope you enjoy this. So since this is typically an ingredient or a bread topping, a taste test in the normal sense doesn't make a lot of sense. But, you know, you could uh, cool this down and put it on bread or use it in soups and stuff like that. So, but I'm going to go ahead and taste it like it is and just kind of give you my impressions. So the first thing I taste in this is the powdered paprika. And it's a really, really wonderful taste, especially with the onions and the uh, red bell peppers. Um, this is wonderful um, as, as I say, both as a soup base and, for example, as a bread topping. So I encourage you to try to make this, um, especially if you want to try to use it for the soyenka. Note, if you don't add enough salt here, um, then you may actually have to add a little bit of salt rather than just, say, pickle juice and ketchup to the soyenka when you get there. Um, enjoy!